I've always been a night owl. So when I landed a job at Greg's, the prestigious restaurant that overlooked the city from the top of an ancient hill, I thought I'd, I'd found the perfect place to work. Little did I know, though, the eerie beauty of that place would soon unravel into a sinister tale of desperation, obsession, and a lingering sense of impending doom. My name is Alex, and this is the story of my time at Greg's. The restaurant was a relic from a bygone era, its grandeur untouched by modern trends. Dimly lit chandeliers cast eerie, flickering shadows on the oak-paneled walls, and the mahogany tables whispered secrets of decades past. The view of the city's glittering lights through the tall, narrow windows was enchanting. It was the perfect place for a romantic evening. The staff was a peculiar mix of individuals who had worked at Greg's for as long as anyone could remember. Most unsettling was the manager, Mr. Wentworth. His gaunt face bore a perpetual scowl and his icy blue eyes seemed to pierce your very soul when he spoke. He rarely did, though. The atmosphere at Greg's was charged with a tension I couldn't quite understand. A sense of impending doom seemed to hang heavy in the air. One evening, as I carried a tray of lobster bisque to table five, I couldn't help but overhear the murmured conversation of a couple nearby. The woman leaned in, her voice barely a whisper. Did you hear about the Greg's dilemma? Her companion, a man with graying temples, nodded solemnly. It's a legend among the regulars. They say Greg's has a secret, a riddle that no one has ever solved. I exchanged a glance with my coworker, Sarah, who had been at Greg's for years. She shrugged as if to say, it's just a silly story. But the intrigue had taken hold of me. I couldn't help but ask her about it later, when the last customer had left and we were cleaning up. The Greg's dilemma? Oh, it's just a silly old legend, she chuckled nervously. Tell me anyway, I urged. She sighed looking around as if to make sure no one else was listening. They say that when the restaurant was built, the owner, Mr. Gregory, had a penchant for puzzles. He left behind a riddle, a sort of challenge to the staff. If anyone ever solves it, they say a great fortune awaits. I was intrigued, but still skeptical. And has anyone ever solved it? She lowered her voice even further. Rumors say that Mr. Wentworth, our manager, has been trying for decades. But no one knows what the riddle is. Some say it's hidden in the architecture of the building, while others believe it's hidden in the menu itself. As the days passed, I couldn't shake the thought of the Greg's dilemma from my mind. Mr. Wentworth's obsession with it was palpable. He would often sit alone in the dimly lit corner of the restaurant, poring over old books and maps. His eyes seemed hollow, haunted by a pursuit that had consumed him. One evening, while I was refilling water glasses, I accidentally knocked over a book from Mr. Wentworth's table. It was a worn, leather-bound volume filled with cryptic symbols and drawings. He glared at me, his anger burning like a wildfire, but didn't say a word. The pages of that book, however, haunted my dreams that night. Unable to resist, I started researching the history of Greg's. It had been built in the late 19th century by a wealthy eccentric who had a fascination with enigmas. His obsession with puzzles was well documented. I became convinced that the Greg's dilemma was real and that it held the key to something extraordinary. Weeks turned into months and my fascination with the riddle grew into an obsession of my own. I spent hours after work 
poring over old records, architectural plans, and menus. The more I searched, the more I became convinced that the answer was hidden within the restaurant itself. One evening, as I was dusting a bookshelf in the corner, I noticed something peculiar. One of the books was slightly askew, revealing a hidden compartment. My heart raced as I pulled out a dusty, leather-bound journal. It belonged to Mr. Gregory himself. The journal was filled with cryptic writings, sketches, and maps. It was as if Mr. Gregory had left behind a trail of breadcrumbs leading to the ultimate solution of the Greg's dilemma. My hands trembled as I deciphered the notes, tracing the intricate patterns of his mind. Days turned into sleepless nights as I followed the clues, each one leading me deeper into the heart of the restaurant. It was a labyrinth of hidden passages, concealed doors, and secret compartments. I couldn't believe what I was discovering. One evening, I ventured into the basement, a place I had always avoided. The air was damp and filled with the musty scent of decay. I stumbled upon an old wine cellar, its shelves lined with dusty bottles dating back centuries. But what caught my attention was a peculiar inscription on the wall. It was a phrase in Latin, Mors venit sub Greg's, which roughly translated to death comes beneath Greg. My heart pounded as, as I realized I was standing in the very heart of the restaurant, directly below the main dining area. I rushed back upstairs and pulled out the map from Mr. Gregory's journal. It all made sense now. The riddle was hidden within the architecture of the building itself, and it led to a hidden chamber beneath Greg's. With trembling hands, and started following the path indicated on the map. It led me to a series of concealed doors and hidden passages, each one more intricate than the last. The sense of impending doom I had felt since I started working at Greg's grew stronger with each step. Finally, I stood before a massive oak door, its surface covered in strange symbols and enigmatic patterns. My heart raced as I realized that this was the final piece of the puzzle. The door creaked open, revealing a pitch black chamber beyond. I hesitated for a moment, but my curiosity and obsession pushed me forward. I stepped into the darkness, feeling my way along the cold stone walls. As I moved deeper into the chamber, I felt a growing sense of unease. The air was heavy with a foul metallic scent and the temperature dropped drastically. I knew I was not alone in that chamber. Suddenly, a dim light flickered to life, revealing a gruesome sight. The chamber was filled with rows of empty, ornate coffins, their lids open and waiting. Panic gripped me as I realized the truth. This was a burial chamber, hidden beneath the restaurant for over a century. The realization hit me like a sledgehammer. The Greg's dilemma was not a puzzle to be solved, but a curse to be uncovered. Mr. Gregory, in his obsession with enigmas, had created a macabre ritual. The staff of Greg's had been burying their secrets and their guilt in these coffins, generation after generation, believing that the riddle held the key to their salvation. I turned to leave, but the massive oak door had slammed shut, sealing me inside the chamber. The dim light flickered and went out, leaving me in total darkness. I could feel a presence in the room, a malevolent force that seemed to feed on the fear that gripped me. As I fumbled in the dark, I heard a voice, cold and hollow, whispering in my ear. You have uncovered the truth but you will never leave this place. Desperation consumed me as I pounded on the door, but it remained immovable. I was trapped in the heart of the restaurant.
surrounded by the restless souls of those who had come before me, all victims of the Greg's dilemma. Days turned into weeks, and I slowly lost track of time in that dark, haunted chamber. The malevolent presence grew stronger with each passing day, whispering secrets and curses into my ears. I knew I was doomed, that I would join the ranks of the restless dead trapped beneath Greg's. But then, one fateful night, as I lay in despair, I heard a voice that was not like the others. It was Sarah, my co-worker, calling out to me. She had followed my trail of clues and discovered the secret chamber. Together, we managed to decipher the final riddle, a plea for redemption left behind by Mr. Gregory himself. With trembling hands, Anne's completed the ritual, sealing the coffins forever and banishing the malevolent force that had haunted Greg's for generations. The massive oak door finally swung open and we stumbled out into the restaurant above, gasping for air. The curse of the Greg's dilemma had been lifted, but the restaurant bore the scars of its dark past. The atmosphere had changed, the ambience no longer haunting but eerily serene. Mr. Wentworth, his obsession finally broken, retired and the restaurant slowly returned to a semblance of normalcy. I left Greg soon after, haunted by the memories of my time there. The allure of the prestigious restaurant had faded, replaced by the chilling knowledge of its dark history. The Greg's dilemma was no longer a legend. It was a reality I had lived through, a tale of desperation, obsession, and a sense of impending doom that would forever haunt my nightmares. 